We're in Cartagena, one of the most touristed spots here in Colombia. We have 24 hours in the city and we're starting out here at San Felipe Fort. We are visiting Cartagena and Medellin, two bustling cities in Colombia. After four days of absolute peace at an ecological reserve, we are ready to eat and see what these popular cities are all about. We are Dan Yaniki, husband and wife who saved up several years to finally see more of the world. Subscribe to our channel and join in on our travels. Today, we bring you Cartagena and Medellin. All right, so this fort that we're at is right at the exterior of the old wall. Cartagena is kind of the old city versus the new city. So that like old Spanish architecture and then the new city is the skyscrapers kind of that Miami vibe that you see behind me. We came here for only one day because we've been a bit sick. Uh, we haven't been able to like get out and do anything here in Colombia like we wanted to, but that's okay. That's part of traveling long term. So we don't really know too much about Cartagena. But we're gonna try to experience it here in one day. Yeah, we just thought let's just head out to the old town and see what we can find. Mm -hmm. Starting at this fort, it's searing hot today. Yeah. So we'll see how it's gonna go. But we do notice that this is a very good spot to kind of see the city. We had a little trouble traveling in Colombia because it's kind of hard to walk around and film because it's not always advised to do that to whip out your camera to just walk through the neighborhood because the next street could be pretty dangerous so to be on top and kind of see the city is pretty nice and i think it's pretty safe to walk in the old town as well it's really hot i might have to buy one of those panama hats we also heard that the vendors here in cartagena are the most aggressive in all of colombia yeah. as soon as we pulled up in the taxi they were ready around the taxi to sell us panama hats <laughs> and bottles of water but they're still very respectful and nice it's no. definitely a different vibe than medellin or bogota i think they can tell i'm a gringo yeah. so they are like on me immediately i'm like hola hola como estas <laughs> We are now inside the fort and I have no idea where this is leading to. But there are lots of small compartments. There's also not really a map or something to tell us what to look at or where to go. Orange or coconut? Orange. Because it's so hot and we're tired from all the uphill walking. We're having an ice cream. So we're done with the fort. Uh, if you'd ever want to do this, it's about 25,000 commune pesos per person. Not too expensive, but there's also not a lot going on other than walking on the fort. But you can see the historic downtown behind us. We're gonna walk over there. And do what we do best, which is eat. Eat. So we found a restaurant here in the old town to have some food. It was super loud in there, so we did not film it. But we had just a burger and I had a Caribbean bowl with coconut rice, chicken. And I had some cold brew, which <laughs> means I'm hyped and ready to vlog. <laughs> the old town is basically characterized by beautiful buildings. It's very colorful. It has a Caribbean summer vibe. And we're just gonna walk around to a square walk around the old town of Cartagena and then make our way to the beaches because that's what people come here to do as well, go to the beaches. Right, you can tell this is a full-fledged tourist town. Uh, things are a little bit more expensive. You yeah. can find uh, fancier cuisine, the cold brew coffees. Yeah. Um, and of course, uh, spectacular beaches too, which we'll do later. Yeah, we paid 90,000 Colombia pesos for lunch, which is pretty expensive here. Mm -hmm. uh, but everything in the old town is, is going to be expensive, so. Still walk around the town. Still see pretty squares, churches, and lots of colorful houses. We also have these beautiful ladies all around of the city, and they they're sitting there waiting for you to take photos. Um, I think it has to do with the slavery history of Cartagena. I'm not so sure. Lots of street vendors. Lots of street vendors. Lots of people wanting your money. Uh, <laughs> some of them offer some cool, cool things. They do. What? What do you see? I see an open uh, kitchen. I see a cool uh, restaurant, but it looks very expensive. 
<laughs> and we're budget travelers, so <laughs> not today. And if you want to go, this is what we're seeing. So you're never too far away from the outside wall, which you can actually get on top of and walk around. Now on top of the wall, it's, it's around the entire old town of Cartagena. So you could walk the entire wall. Which we're not I, gonna do. No, but it's cool to stand outside here because then you can actually see the ocean and the city within. It's really nice. Yeah, you can kind of see what it would have been like back in the day, right? Protected from the pirates. The yeah. Spaniards. No, not the Spaniards. No, no, they were the Spaniards. They yeah. came here and they took over. <laughs> and over there is going to be the new city, right? That's going to be where you see the skyscrapers, got that Miami vibe, right? So we're going to go over there next and check it out. We're now in Boca Grande, which is the Miami of Cartagena. It's more than just an old city Cartagena is. It's also a place where people come to have that beach vacation. Uh, everyone here keeps comparing it to Miami and it does have that uh, similar feel. And after three weeks in Colombia, Cartagena is our final stop in the country. But we did go to Medellin and we did film there. We spent a full 24 hours in the city and this is kind of how it went. We joined a walking tour to explore the city of Medellin, which is really an awesome thing to do. We highly recommend it. The guide grew up in Medellin and still lives here. He explained some interesting things about Pablo Escobar and cocaine, and how most Colombians do not say his name out loud, and will find it pretty offensive if you do so as a tourist. And after these stories, we moved on to see more of the city. Right, so we stopped to have some lemonade juices are really big here, so we always try that out. And we're in this huge outlet mall uh, with a bunch of like off-brand shirts and stuff, so we're checking that out. This is a juice with lime. And it tastes like a mojito without alcohol. And then we have two cheese swingies. Looks pretty good. Mm. Very good. It's like a white cheese in there. It's hot. It's just hot in Medellin. But so far, the tour is really good. Be very careful, guys, with the big poppers, especially when we stop to cross the streets. You got it? All right, come on, let's go. The guide has told us where the pickpocket areas are, which is very helpful with all of our cameras. There is a saying in Colombia no dar papaya. Don't give any papaya, which means don't give any opportunity for someone to pickpocket you. A papaya is a low-hanging fruit and therefore very easy to pick off the tree. So if we entered a different street, our guide would tell us the papaya levels. Going into papaya level 4, so I don't think we're going to... And in this street is where people sell some interesting things, such as homemade concoctions for all kinds of remedies, and some adult films. Aside from beautiful architecture, culture, and foods, our guide also talked about how the conflicts of the past 50 years have shaped Colombia. The best way to see it is through art. Here you can see a statue that was bombed, and next to it, the exact same statue, but new. The bombed statue was left as a reminder, the new one a symbol of the Colombian resilience. Now the tour is over. It took about three or four hours to get the tour done. Great way to see the city of Medellin. I don't think we would have seen the way we've seen it now on our own without a tour. Yeah, we learned so much about yes. the, the beginnings of Medellin all the way up into the current transformation. So very yeah. cool. But now I'm hungry. Time for a food tour. Time for a food tour. Finally time to do what we came to Medellin to do. Eat. Eat. <laughs> so we booked a food tour here in Medellin and we're gonna eat Colombian foods. So let's go. Some salt and some lime, some limon. Oh, okay. So we're now eating an unripe mango and they put lime juice on it and salt because they don't like to eat their mangoes sweet. And I remember when we were in the bus in Colombia, we bought mangoes and they weren't sweet. And we thought, why are they selling unripe mangoes? And we didn't eat them. But now we know why. Now that we're eating this with this knowledge, it's actually really good. It's like a good snack. Yeah, it's like a mix between a pickle and a pineapple and a mango. A pickle and a mango. Yeah. yeah. 
for snack. So we do it okay. like this. Hospitals, roads. So to I have some more if you want some more. What is it? This is okay. Oh, it's like okay. Let me see. Then oh, to yeah. me, like, a, in Mexico they do lime and tequila. In yeah. Colombia we do mango and aguardiente. Okay. Ah. So the idea is to get the shot and then the mango. So arriba, abajo, al centro, al centro. It's a perfect way to start the tour. Yeah. <laughs> so apparently, in uh, Mexico, you have tequila and then you have, uh, you know, salt and lemon. And here they have their Colombian alcohol and then they have that soury lime mango. Candy that we call bocadillo. Bocadillo. And then you get sweet mm. salty at the same time to balance the flavor. So we just ate bocadillo which is a mango candy with which they put in banana leaves so you can throw it away she said that they usually give it as dessert the menu del dia the daily menu Because they're very fluffy, mm -hmm. but also they're kind of like Ooh, nice. crunchy on the outside. And it's like a donut. Kind of. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And then if you can handle it, more. Okay. To me, that's more than enough. Let's eat some more Colombian food. We're now at a traditional uh, Colombian restaurant. Their name of the restaurant translates to, let me tell you, like the beginning of the story. And this is the story of the Colombian cuisine. So it looks like they're cooking up some stuff in their kitchen. Very excited to see what we're going to eat. Up until now, we've been kind of eating snacks. Yeah, very excited. Also about the empanadas and buñuelos we just ate. Those are the two deep fried snacks here in Colombia that are really popular. And apparently they fry a lot of our foods. So those are the two main ones we eat. Now we're gonna eat something more dinner-like, I guess. I don't know. This was it for the food tour. Join in next week when we explore Bogota.